Tonight, we're going to play a little bit of Planet Zoo. So Planet Zoo just came out today. And uh, I'm looking forward to playing it. I haven't, I didn't get to play the beta. So I, I'm not entirely sure uh, how to play the game. I haven't started it yet. So give me just one second. Got to make some quick changes. Titles and stuff. So we'll get started here in just one minute. <laughs> Kevin, what's going on? Uh, just give me one second, people. Sorry for those of you guys jumping in. I uh, wasn't quite ready when I hit the button, <laughs> but I hit the button. I want to get started. I just need to change a couple titles really fast. Okay, let me update this. And let me update Twitch really fast, and then we'll get into the game. Like I said, I haven't played this game. It, it did have, you know, a quick beta that people got into on the quick beta, but I wasn't able to get into the quick beta. I was uh, busy doing other things. And so, um, but we got it. We have it. Okay, everything's updated. I'm ready to go. Let's go live. I just need to start the restream chat to make sure everything else is open. <laughs> you don't have school today, so you'll watch? Okay, cool. And uh, let's get the game going. So I wanted to see everybody to see the very, very beginning of it. And we'll get it up and running. Restream chat is going, I believe. All right, here we go. We'll get it started. Planet Zoo firing up now. Donaldson, what's going on, buddy? Planet Zoo is launching. All right, going in. Let me know if uh, audio and stuff is good. Should be good. Turn down the game audio just a little bit so it's not overwhelming. Oh, little elephant. What the heck? Hey, that's rude. <laughs> that's rude. <laughs> Justin, what's going on, bud? It's time for a little bit of Planet Zoo. All right. I, I, I haven't even started in, right? So I haven't even created my avatar. This is the very first look at Planet Zoo that I have had. So we're all going to be learning together. We're all going to be starting off together here. Let's create my avatar. Whoa. Uh, okay, the guy's okay. Skin color. All right. I was hoping for like a mid-tier between that. Um, That's head. So let's see. Uh, Lips are a little bit too big for me. All right, that looks more like me. Can I zoom in? Yeah, I'll zoom into this guy. Hair. Well, you know, I'm kind of losing my hair. <laughs> that's that's too much of a hair loss. I'm not ready for that hair loss. All right, we're going to stick with this. Facial hair. All right, we'll do it. My, my goatee's not that big, but okay, we're going to do this scruffy goatee. Glasses. Wow, you know, you don't have a lot of accessories and stuff. Hmm. No, that's... I'm going to go with that. We're going to go with that. Pants. I don't want tight jeans. Yeah, let's go loose. Hat. I can only wear a Planet Zoo hat. Weak. Now, what about colors and stuff? Can we do colors? Oh, dang it. It changed my whole... Wow, if I go a little bit bigger, I have to redo my whole guy? Really? Yep, totally different heads and stuff. All right, let's stick with this guy. I would have liked to have changed his color a little bit, but what can we do? Uh, Avatar HQ, where's my HQ at? Where's America? America. Uh, let's put him right here. 
There you go. I can edit it later. All right, but I'm right here for now. All right. First steps for sure. We got to we got to start first step. We got to do a tutorial cuz we don't know what the heck's going on. All right, Goodwin House. Renovating and renaming it after its per purchase by Bernard Goodwin in the 1800s. Bernard uh, Goodwin House has since become one of the most respected zoos in the country. More recently, it's undergone a further renovation to update its many inhabitants and facilities. And due to these various uh, issues, the work hasn't quite been completed. So guess what? That's where I come in. I come in as Mr. Complete. This is done by the same company that does Elite Dangerous, that, that does, uh, what is it, the Theme Park Planet Park or something? Looking forward to playing. Ah, taking forever to load up. I can't believe it's taking so long. Da -da -da -da. Looks like a copy of Planet Coaster, just with animals. Probably is, right? Just got Autonauts? Cool. Did you wind up using the coupon? Did you reach out to... Sorry about that. I, I I have a habit of slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> it's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard. Hey, Bernard. Although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> oh, my God. As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. Please. This is the first zoo I ever opened and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you in at the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker. And she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire. Or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. <laughs> Less shouting that way. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. A great Jake. I'm glad Alex was able to use it. Rosy, fresh face of yours. I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. Yeah. Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma because we're about to get really hands on. Let's go, Nancy. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarize you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and Dang visiting it. some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. All right, how do we do that? I lost all the movement dialogues. Dang it! Uh, basic controls. Uh, select, cancel, pan camera. Okay, figure that out. Zoom camera, figure that out. Rotate cam. God, I hate using the middle mouse button. It's evil! Uh, or rotate camera. Okay, that, that works better for me. Undo a Z. Okay. Uh, what do you got here? Uh, 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 uh. Visiting players? What? Where is my achievement here? Objectives? Yeah, go back to my objective. Uh, let's see. Locate the grizzly habitat. Well, let's see. Grizzly bears. African animal shelter. No, that's, that's not a bear. Um, is that a bear? No, nope, that's a wolf. Let's see. Oh, it's highlighted, right? There's a bear. That's a bear right there. Did you know 
that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus arctos horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year. <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> Enter the Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. All right. This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. The most important thing being its overall welfare. You'll learn more about animal welfare today as we go through your objectives. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera at the bottom of its information panel? Hey, bear. See now, this is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. You awesome. You also get this view of an animal by simply double clicking on it. Why did you tell me that to begin with? Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. All right, how do I get out of this camera angle? Orbit, cinematic. See you, bear. Make some food and have fun. Right. Get some people involved in this. Uh, Let's see. African lion. You highlighted that? Good. All right. Panthera leo leo. All the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride. Although prides of that size are pretty rare. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome, <laughs> which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. Okay, somehow I don't think that guy would have walked in there and done anything with the lions like that, but okay. Uh, an empty hab. You said you highlighted. Okay, here we go. What are we putting in here? As you can see, it's a lovely space for animals, but it's missing a certain something. Yeah. Well, two somethings. Warthogs. <laughs> so I'd like you to adopt a pair of them. To adopt animals, we need to open the animal market, which is in the animal trading section. Okay, done. There we are. A pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo. Just click on them and select adopt from the side menu. Normally, the animal exchange would be full of animals, but I've emptied out the market while you learn how it works. The last thing I need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants. <laughs> but I want them! All right, I ordered them. adopt an animal, it's automatically placed in the trade center where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat, which, as it happens, you are. So how about you move them into their new home? Uh, open animal storage to place the warthogs in the zoo. Okay. Uh, where are we going to move to? How do you know what habitat I want to... Oh, aha. Uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Now I understand. When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade center, collect your animal, and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade center's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Yeah. Where? Oh, here we go. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthog's habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. Uh, Each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat, and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. Uh, it's totally a lot to remember. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. 
All right. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. I'm assuming small food trough and a water bowl. Is that the only thing I could select? Uh, yes, it looks that way. All right. A small water bowl. Well, where would this be? Uh, I, um, clearly, I can only put it in certain areas. All right, we're going to give them... Can I put it in here? No, I cannot put it in here. But this would be a great place for it. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Let's put it in here. Don't poop on your food. It'd be a bad idea. All right, we'll put it out of here for you. What the heck? And uh, a water bowl, huh? You know, if you happen to put water next to their food, they're gonna like. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. What? Bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. All right. Nice work. Yeah, well. Got a knack for this, I see. Uh, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and what's-its all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. Why, if I put down a food trough, are they eating out of this thing? What's the deal, man? Why don't you eat out of your food trough, buddy? Quality used, yeah, suitable for food. I'll keep her to the habitat. What? Um, is he gonna move the food over? Is that how that's gonna happen? Hmm. All right, we'll worry about that later. Cause the warthog, look, the warthog happiness. His welfare is going. His welfare is actually going down. Uh, why do I think we're going to be uh, buying new warthogs soon? Yeah, this guy's in critical state. What if I call Keeper in here? Is this guy coming to do something? No. Alright, Keeper being requested. I know this is the tutorial. They're not going to let these guys die off, right? <laughs> I'm sure they will. Uh, they'll be like, oh, when your creatures die off, because... Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause the game. Just click the pause button in the bottom right corner. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, That's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. All right. Let me see if I can... Yeah, okay, I pause this. Let me see if I can change the properties of the cursor. Yeah, now you can't see a cursor at all, can you? Nope. See, the problem, this is an OBS problem, not my problem. OBS cursor is, like, weird. I don't know why the cursor is so weirded out, but it is. It is offset. It's weirded out. Nothing I can do about it. That is OBS. And uh, I need to figure out why OBS does that, but... All right, anyways, we'll just continue on here. All right, habitat gate. Yeah, it has to be connected to the path, so that... Right, let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. Wow, I don't really like this brick barrier it's a, can i have a smaller barrier good work 
All right. Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Did it. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. Right. At least not without a step ladder. But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so hmm. the guests can see in. How about we do more than one? Uh, transparent. That's not what I want. Highlight the glass barrier. Is this the glass barrier? Highlight the selection of barrier, then click the glass barrier to swap it out. Highlight a section of barrier. There we go. Oh, okay. Adding in All right. Windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on, because it makes them happy, and because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. Right. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy to reach places, like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. All right, there we now, go. Before we adopt our ostriches, you should click the play button. After all, if the game's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? By the way, as well as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? I do. Let's get four of them in here. Four? That's a lot, man. What if I don't want four of them? Alright. Adopt. Adopt. Do they let you multi-select? No. Okay. Oops. It said open what? The ostrich what? Trade history, rewards. Adopt the ostriches. We did that in the trade center. I didn't have to do anything to get them over here. So they're going to come over here by themselves. All right? We're going to have a guy run with a box. Where's my box running guy? speed it up uh do, 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 do. what am i wait okay did i miss something here no that guy's got no one. open animal storage and place the ostrich oh that's right i had to place them somewhere uh that's right i had to move them here okay Okay, got to relocate them. There they go. Happy ostriches. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. Okay. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter so guests can get a really good view of the animals. You should have told me that with the warthogs, woman. How about that? 
The slow feeder. Alright, we'll put the slow feeder over here. And this is what? A water trough? Large food bowl. How do you... Rotate an item in your hand? Hmm... Control? Gonna need a water trough. I'll put the water trough over here. Oh, good to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run at 43 miles per hour? Oh, heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> Wow, the well, tutorial will definitely will not friends. let you go Please beyond. Speed camera joke. Every time we get an ostrich. So, now we've made the ostrich's lives a bit better, let's mm -hmm. do the same for the keepers, shall we? Yeah! To make it easier for the keepers to feed the ostriches and hippos, we should build a new keeper hut. Keeper huts are where the keepers prepare the food for animals. So they should be placed near to the habitats to make sure the keepers don't waste their time walking when they should be looking after the animals. Classic keeper hut, planet zoo keeper hut. Uh, well. Wow. You'll need to rotate the keeper hut to get it to connect up to the path. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Raise, lower, shift, right? Rotate is Z. Ah. That's not, that's not rotate, that's rotate. Okay. This keeper hut only has space for one keeper, but the larger keeper hut can allow multiple keepers to prepare food at the same time. Oh, but bear in mind that keeper huts and other staff facilities shouldn't be placed near to areas where there are lots of guests. Guests don't like seeing facility buildings and it can affect their happiness. Negatively. <laughs> In case that wasn't clear. Something that all facilities, shops and a whole host of other objects need is power. And that obviously includes your newly built keeper hut. So let's place a transformer next to it, shall we? Oh, righty then. Wow. This is pretty intense, you know? You gotta give, like, power and stuff down and... Now, the reason everything has gone blue is because you're using the power heat map. This map allows you to see what is and what isn't powered in your zoo. So, once you've placed your transformer, you can click in the bottom left to turn the heat map off. All right. Outside of placement area. Oh, okay. It also tells me where the front of this is. Why does it go larger? Lovely work. Now the keepers can start using the hut to prepare food. And thanks to where you put it, they won't need to walk very far to deliver it to the ostriches and hippos. Let's get on to your next objective then. Bengal tigers. We want to adopt some, but I'm afraid there's nothing ready for them yet. Head on over to the plot of land I've marked out. It's not too far away. This is Planet Zoo, so it's it's very similar to like um if you play your next planet uh theme park or you know any of the zoo management or theme park management related games this is a new one just came out today planet zoo job is to build a habitat from scratch <laughs> And concrete and glass i expect so go ahead and build it just make sure that the habitat includes that big hole we've dug oh and don't forget to add a habitat gate to the barrier hmm. oh and make sure the guests will be able to see the tigers okay anything else yeah let me hear
Uh, you know, so far, very similar to setting up, like, you know, mm, the Planet Coaster game where you're, you know, you're setting up your zoo instead of a coaster. Oh, it's kind of tricky right now. Oh, I need a gate. Can I put the gate over here? Ooh, I can. Now, Night. Bernie takes safety very seriously at his zoos, so we should probably make sure those tigers can't jump out of their habitat, don't you think? <laughs> The way we'll do it is by changing the height of the habitat's barrier. Oh. Okay then, you should start by double-clicking the habitat barrier, which will take you into barrier editing mode. Why? Why didn't Great. you? Now highlight the entire perimeter of the habitat. You can do that by clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Clicking and dragging the barrier selection tool. Now you've got all of the perimeter selected, okay. you can increase the height of it by clicking and dragging the barrier height tool upwards. You'll want to make sure it reaches a height of at least 3.7 meters. All right. Now that the habitat is in place, don't forget to put down a donation box near to your viewing areas. We need every dollar we can get. <laughs> Especially as these tigers aren't exactly eating instant noodles for lunch. No doubt. I want to swap out this piece, though. Uh, no, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, how do I replace this again? There we go. Okay. Let's put down some donation boxes. Okay, that's the habitat boundary complete, the habitat mm -hmm. gate in place, and most importantly, the tigers won't be able to jump out of it anymore. I think it's time we adopted those tigers. I think you're right, too. Why can't I put... The donation box on the pathway. Huh. What happened to the warthogs, though? <laughs> Holy God, tigers are expensive. How much money do I have? I have $200,000. Okay. Whilst our trusty caretakers collect and deliver the tigers, let's take a look at preparing the habitat for their arrival. Right. We'll start with the basics. Add a suitable feeding station for them. Hmm. Hmm, where would be a good feeding station? Well, I'll put the feeding station right in the front. That way people can see the <laughs> tiger chopping on whatever goes in here. I think in like Jurassic this Park. Time, instead of adding a water bowl, let's try something different. Yeah, let's fill this Some thing with water. need a pool in their habitat so they can go for a swim, but they can also use it to drink from. 
All you have to do is make sure the banks of the pool have a gentle slope so they can easily get a nice refreshing drink. There's already a pool excavated, but you still need to fill it with water. You should do that by going into terrain and selecting the water tool. Calm water or rough water? Uh, I'm assuming calm water, yes? Yes, that'll do nicely. Of course, just like the warthogs and ostriches, these tigers will also need some enrichment. Why don't you add some suitable toy and food enrichment items into their habitat? Rubbing pad, sure. I'll give you a rubbing pad, buddy. Let's put it out in the open. Okay. Frozen blood pumpkin. Uh Okay, it's really right. starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. Oh, it's a huge shelter. Uh, well, we kind of want this shelter to be visible to everybody, right? Can we put the shelter in a corner like this? Eh. He did not come back and say anything. All right. Well, she didn't talk to me about... Okay, we can move it. Uh, wait a minute here. How do I move the entire shelter? Oh my god, I can move pieces of the shelter. Uh, can we move the entire shelter at one? Yes, we can. Okay. What about a smaller shelter? This shelter's too big. Right, I'm going to put this shelter right on the corner here. I think this is a good place for the shelter. All right. Bye, right, what's going on, man? Feeding station. Uh, enrichment toy. Increase the hard shelter welfare. 160. Uh, increased terrain welfare to 100%. Are we still waiting for the animals to get delivered? I think we're still waiting for the animals to get delivered. Let's speed up the time here. We added a toy. I believe we added the shelter. We don't need more than one shelter, I would think. We have enough shelters. Okay, it's really starting to take shape. Now, the tigers will need a shelter in their habitat so they can hide from the guests, or more likely the bad weather. Although given that we're in England, you might want to think of that just as normal weather. <laughs> Go on, add a shelter to their habitat. You can either build one from various suitable bits and bobs, or if you like, just pop down the blueprint that I've already built for you. I did!
Okay, I don't know what more she wants from me. Oh, I had it on pause. Okay, it's one tiger. Oh, poor Dabs. I'm sure it can't have escaped your attention that the tigers look a bit miffed. That's because they aren't too keen on the type of terrain in their habitat. Select a tiger and bring up its information panel. Pissed off tiger. Thirsty, go drink some water, bud. Alright, open the terrain tab. Oh god. Uh Radio. click on the terrain tab. That way you can view the terrain information and see how they feel about the different types of terrain. That'll tell you what the tigers need more of or less of in this habitat. Okay then, open the terrain editing tool, select painting, and give them some more soil. Yes, that should help with the habitat part of their welfare. More soil. Okay, and then they also want long grass. Uh, yeah, that is long grass, though. Oh, maybe they want less long grass. They want less long grass. Okay, all right, all right. I see where I'm at here. They want more short grass. There we go. Too much long grass. Not enough short grass. Right then. All animals need plants Perfect. and trees from their own biome or continent. You know, deserts, savannas, or Asia, Europe, that sort of thing. It looks like these tigers need a few more plants in their habitat. To get a perfect fit, use plants from the rainforest and temperate biomes that are native to Asia. Although, if you have to, you can get away with using just one or the other. The tigers will also want a certain amount of their habitat to be covered by those plants. To find out which plants to use and how many, select a tiger and go to the Environment tab. Look at this guy. This brave guy walking through the tiger thing. Like, they're not going to eat him as food. Now... As you can see, some of the plants currently in the habitat aren't quite right for the tiger, like the wattle bushes. You can remove them if you want. You can find all of the plants you need in the nature section, and you can use the filters to only show the types of plants you want to see. In this case, that's plants from the rainforest or temperate biomes. Uh, temperate. I don't see rainforest on the list. But I don't like this tree. 
Incompatible continent. Not from the same continent. How do you get rid of a specific tree? Oh, it's even highlighting the bush for me. Ooh, interesting. So let's see. He wants... You guys want some of these? Give me some more of that. Let's give you some more of these trees here. Okay. Give you a tree next to the water area. How do you dig up a tree? She didn't tell me how I dig up a tree, though. So if that's the bush that they don't like. Um, oh, okay, here we go. Wattle bush. Oh, that's it. The environmental tab. Let's see. Wattle bush. There's two more wattle bushes. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. Now you should be happy, right? Let me pin this. Is that a pin? No. And the tree. So this tree's got to go. Where's the other tree? They said four trees. I just put down a couple of trees. Are those the trees that they don't like? No, it's an African tree. Where are you at, tiger? Environment. African tree. Yeah, yeah, that was, those were the trees. I just put down those trees and you didn't like them. Put the frig over. All right, what do you want? Plant coverage, they need more plant coverage. I did environmental filter. Tropical, let's go tropical. You gonna dig this bush? You're fine with this bush. All right, good. Give me a couple more of these guys. Oh god, you guys want a lot of bushes. Uh, bamboo. I can. Gonna... You be happy with bamboo? All right. And I don't know about you, but bamboo is gonna grow all over the place. Not gonna be happy with it. Let's see, coconut palm. I've never seen a coconut tree where tigers are, but okay, whatever. Give me some coconut trees. This is a non-visible area anyway, so we'll put some trees over here. Okay. Quite happy with that. You're getting up there. Um, you want more. Corkwood tree. Fill this area up. Okay. Coverage. Still need more. Corkwood tree. Small corkwood tree. All right. Awesome. They say the good fences make good neighbors. I guess that's doubly true when one of the neighbors is a Bengal tiger. <laughs> Still, those tigers look so happy that I doubt they'd leave. Even if you did poke a hole in their fence. <laughs> oh, but for heaven's sake, don't test that theory. That guy's funny, huh? All right, so did I... 
Oh no, we still have some more. Over to the Indian peafowls. I've been told that we need to improve their social welfare. Indian peafowls. What? Uh. Just find one of the peafowls and select them to open an information panel. Then we can have a good gander at how they're doing. Although technically, I suppose gandering would just be for geese. All right, I got it. Social welfare, social welfare, social group. You need more people. You need more of them. There's only one in there. Adopt three more. Expand their social welfare, and we can get a bit more detail. All right, we'll do it. Give them to me. Now, they've clearly got plenty of space, and they're not stressed, but it looks like their social group isn't quite right. Yeah. Let's find out more. Uh, Click on the social tab at the top of their information panel to see what's wrong. Right, they don't have enough population. I figured that out already. Come on. Let me adopt some more. Right. As you can see, the peafowlers need their population to be larger. To solve this little problem, you'll need to adopt three more female peafowls. Off you pop to the animal market then. Got it. Done and done. Good work on those peafowls. I expect they'll be delivered soon. Good. But sadly, it sounds like our snow leopard is a bit grumpy. Let's head over there and see what's wrong with her. The biggest question is how are you going to stay on top of managing all these animals? I'm not seeing like in any indicator popping up and saying, hey, this animal is not happy. Just like people, animals can suffer from stress if things aren't quite right. You know, like when you see someone put in the milk before the tea bag. <laughs> in the case of these snow leopards, they're a bit stressed by their lack of privacy. You can lower their stress levels by swapping out the normal glass barrier by their cave for one-way glass. It's not a cheap option, but I think they're worth the expense, don't you? This will give the snow leopard somewhere to go when they want to get away from the prying eyes of the guests. All right. Done. Of course, when an animal isn't in its natural biome, it's probably going to be too hot or too cold. Unsurprisingly for the snow leopards, it's... It's too hot, even with the terrible British weather. You should help cool it down by adding some coolers to their habitat. But let's start by opening up the temperature heat map and having a look-see at the temperature in the leopard's habitat. As you can see, we already have one cooler in there. Let's pop some more down and get as much of the habitat as chilly as we can. Luckily for us, this habitat already has power, but you'll need to make sure of that in the future. Just so you know, if any part of a habitat is powered, then the whole habitat will be powered. All right. That's kind of neat. I like how the cooler works. You can find heat maps for all sorts of helpful things, so do be sure to explore them and make good use of them. It'll take a little while for the temperature to adjust once you've added coolers or heaters, but now we've got the coolers in, we can address the leopard's terrain welfare. You see, what the leopards really want in here is snow and rock, so let's make that happen.
Oh, where's the leopard at? Uh, terrain. Long grass, more snow. Okay. More snow. No problem. And they want long grass. Oh, no, they want less long grass. They want... You need a rock. Do they have rock in here? Rough rock. should give okay. you a pretty good understanding of how to make animals happy. So I'd like you to go and check on all the other animals in the zoo and fix up any issues with their habitats. That'll increase the average welfare of the animals across the whole zoo. And that average welfare is a very important statistic. Wow. Now, to quickly see how all your animals are doing in the yes. zoo, Tell you me. should go into zoo management and Where? turn into the animals section. As you can see, this list shows you the animal's overall welfare. So, if something's amiss, then you can quickly pop over to them using the locate button. Right, I'm off for a cuppa while you make sure all the animals are well looked after. What the hell, woman? How do I know that something's wrong with them, though? Clean this condition, yeah? Nobody's in quarantine. Habitats, number of animals, welfare. Okay, I'm looking at the welfare. All right, this welfare is not that great. The reason why is because what? What is your problem here? Peacock boy. Uh, Why didn't it select the peacock though? This one. This one, welfare is not good. Nutrition is not good. So, last meal quality, nutrition. So we need food and water? They have a large food bowl. They didn't talk about quality, though. How do you increase the quality of their food? Yeah, like, he just went happy because he just got some food. Increase it up to 90. Ah, uh, okay. All right, that's cool. So these guys have no enrichment. The giant tortoises have no enrichment. 
Okay, I'm starting to see what's going on here. So if I jump over to them, go to habitat, go to enrichment items. No, what's good for a tortoise? Are they going to be happy with a cardboard box? Probably not. Let's see. What, what makes a tortoise happy? Uh, let's see. Enrichment. Species food enrichment. Species toy enrichment. Food enrichment. Oh, God. That's huge. Low feeder, is that going to help your enrichment? Boy enrich. A chew toy? What the frig? Yeah, how about just by species? Let's go by species. Uh, tortoise. There we go. A sprinkler. Destructed. All right, let's give him a sprinkler. Uh, that helped him out. And food enrichment. Oh yeah, I gave him totally. I totally gave him the wrong thing. A frozen block. All right, there we go. What about this thing? Can we get rid of this thing? Amanda, how you doing? Let's get rid of this thing. They don't like this. Thanks for subscribing. All right. Let's go over to... You guys are doing okay. Your habitat is still kind of missing something. But not as bad as these guys. What do you need? You need enrichment as well. So let's go over there. Let's look at habitat enrichment for a zebra. Plain zebra? What kind of zebra were these? Plain zebra. All right, I'll give you a ball. And they wanted what else? Zebra. Habitat, they needed more enrichment. Zebra. Uh, grazing ball, overview, food, toy. They need another food. Let's give them a hanging feeder. They wanted a toy. A rubbing pole? Not bad. Not okay. bad at all. I think it's fair to say that you've passed the first part of your training with flying colors. Good. There's still lots more to learn, but we'll have to head to another one of Bernie's zoos for that. If you want to grab your passport, we'll head off, shall we? Sure. Sounds like you've got the whole zoo purring away nicely. Well, purring, grunting, screaming, booming, <laughs> all the uh, appropriate noises. I guess I was right to hire you, huh? 
<laughs> Don't tell her I told you, but Nancy wasn't sure you'd even last the morning. What? So we're happy this is working out. And Nancy owes me a foxy coffee. <laughs> As strange as it seems, considering we just met, when I look at you, I feel like you're the child I never had. After the one I did have, obviously. But you see, zookeeping's not for my daughter. Don't get me wrong. Emma absolutely loves animals, but she set her sights somewhat higher. Mm-hmm. Wants to save the entire planet. I'll just settle for saving a couple of species. Mm, and maybe having a type of frog named after me. <laughs> Tutorial audio is a little slow. Kind of clunky. So I'm assuming I'm done with this, right? Do we leave this zoo? I don't, I don't know that I want to save the zoo. Let's see if I have a new tutorial. Let's just save this zoo. Okay. And let's go back to the main menu, see if there's another piece of the tutorial that's opened up. It's a little confusing. Hmm, interesting. So maybe maybe I needed an additional first step or something like that. I, I don't know. Maybe it continues on. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about uh, Planet Zoo. If you want to see more Planet Zoo, we'll probably play a little bit more, get through the tutorial, and maybe try to get into like um, a uh, challenge mode or a franchise mode and see what happens. A lot to learn about the game. Just came out today. If you guys are fans of like Planet Theme Park and... Uh, other kind of, you know, uh, management, zoo management type games. Uh, there's been many. Uh, you know, this is a game for you because, it's, like I said, new iteration. Same people that do Elite Dangerous and uh, Planet Theme Park. And uh, it, good stuff. Interesting stuff. So let me know in the comments. We'll talk to you soon. See you later.